Black lives matter. Of course they do. Of course they do. At times it feels hardly worth saying, of course black lives matter, all lives matter. But black lives matter. All lives matter is an insult. Because it is black lives that have been hurt and abused for generations. Here, amongst our communities, we're good people. We're good people. Why would we need to change? What difference does it make? I'll tell you a story. When I was a curate, I was a curate in Leeds and uh, we lived in an urban part of Leeds and where we lived in particular was uh, largely among Bangladeshi and, uh, and other immigrant peoples, but mainly Bangladeshis. Um, we lived and we looked out onto a, a park and the other side of the park was, uh, was, was much wealthier. Uh, much more established housing. Our side of the park, the housing historically had been extremely poor. Big Victorian slums. Really, some of the worst housing in the whole of the country. We had the highest number of uh, outside toilets. This was the 1980s. Outside toilets. No inside plumbing of anywhere in the country in the 1980s. The other side of the park, much more wealthy. When we got together as clergy and we were planning a day on, on working together with our congregations on, uh, on, on, on things to do with employment, uh, we were doing about youth and education, uh, we ran a day, we had specialists come in and one of the specialists was coming to teach us uh, and help us work through uh, race issues and racism. The vicar of the parish on the other side of the park said, that won't be of any interest to our congregation. We're all white and we live in an area which is mainly white Yorkshire people. I was a curate. He was the rector of the biggest church around, wealthy church. He went on to be Archdeacon of Leeds. He was somebody who knew his way around. He didn't really take being told what to do by a curate in the next door church. I was horrified. I was appalled and I went and prayed. I kind of spoke up a little bit, but I prayed. And I thought, I don't know how to tackle this. I don't know how to engage with this because the racism inherent in that statement is so deep. I don't know where to begin to tackle it. God, I was so upset. I was so cross. I didn't know what to do. When it came to the day, I knew which session I was going to. I was going to the one on, on racism. And uh, I thought it'll be me and probably one other. Who wants to go to a session? Because most of the church people were, were white, even in our parish. Who wants to go and hear? Do you know what? White people, we've not done very well. Who wants to go to that session? And I sat there, increasingly uncomfortable, when they said, right, now we're going to go to the breakout rooms. The session on racism is over here. The one on employment and youth is over there, whatever. And, uh, and the rector of that big church stood up and said, right, everyone, we're all going in this one. My mouth dropped open. They were all going to the session on racism. What happened? It's the turning to Christ. 
when you walk with Christ and you listen, something strange happens. That week, he'd walked into his uh, little paper shop, the paper shop that he had uh, down the end of the street. And he'd gone in and he'd said, uh, how are you doing? He said, oh, you know, it's terrible. You know, we, we need to retire. And we've had this shop up for sale for, for six months now. And the only people that we've had in offering to take over our corner shop are, and then came out, the inevitable racist slur. You know the one, begins with P, and is totally inaccurate of people from the Indian subcontinent. We've only had these people asking to buy the shop, and I won't have it. I won't have it. I won't have this. This is a white area for white people. This is England. This is in the 1980s. And we were living under an apartheid system, a colour bar, the, 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 um, the park was a dividing line. And if you went into a, a state agent and you were white, they would say there's the wrong side of the park and the right side of the park. And then they'd go, you know what I mean? There's the black side of the park and there's the white side of the park. Wrong, right, black, white. And as that rector had, had talked to his, uh, the owner of that corner shop, he'd got to hear about others, the others with houses for sale. And a, a house was for sale, a, 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 a people of Indian or um, uh, Afro-Caribbean origin would come and, and they want to look around the house to see if they could buy it. And before 10 minutes had passed after those people had gone, the neighbours would be knocking at the door. We don't want that kind of person on our street. If you let one in, we'll have them all. The racism that was inherent in their church and their church community and their wider community needed confronting. So I'm really pleased that he went on to be the Archdeacon of Leeds. What a great person, because God can turn the heart of anyone. And Edward Colston is a really interesting character. And it, 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 it provides us with a kind of really interesting insight into ourselves. Here was a man who is celebrated for doing good things. Now, the things he did, and he celebrated the good, you know, setting up schools, giving money to good things. And I don't think he did it to try and clear his name from being a slaver. The people who he lived with did not think slavery was a bad thing. Part of many members of that company, I mean, the father of liberalism, the, 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 the philosopher Locke was among the investors in that company. Royalty, significant people close to the king. The slave trade was not thought to be wrong, it was thought to be right. He wasn't trying to clear his name. What makes him different to those others? was that he gave and used his money for good. How could someone who was interested in doing good not understand that slavery was such a horrific evil? He was establishing the industrialization of something that had gone on for centuries. Slavery has always been part of, of of, of human life, go back to the first earliest civilizations, the Egyptian civilization. He was part of its industrialization. The callousness over human life. We're having arguments over Brexit, whether we can have chlorinated chickens, how we keep cows, how we keep pigs, whether we want organic, free range eggs. 
And yet people were kept in worse conditions. And when it was convenient, just thrown over the side of ships, worth less than some of the animals, for example, the horses, which people like Edward Colson would have owned. How could he be so blind that he could not see? And of course, Edward Coulson himself didn't ask for these monuments, monuments to put up. The, the one that was taken down, that was put up by the Victorians. Now, the Victorians possibly were trying to clean up the image of Bristol, to take away from Bristol the idea that it was linked to slavery. Very, could, very well could be that case. And others have made the case that, do you know what? Slavery might have been a bad thing, but some good things came out of it. Absolutely appalling. But we all are people who think of ourselves as good. And that's one of the things about slavery, about racism. For us who are the privileged and the powerful, we think we are good. And on the whole we are. But if we're going to be really good, we need to go and discover that black lives matter. What is it that we have done and are doing that has contributed to a world where violence towards black people can be tolerated, accepted and even praised? Early on in my uh, time here in the Benefit, I, I accepted an invite to go and speak at a mission conference in Alabama. Alabama, a heart of racial inequality, a place which, which grew out of slavery. And to speak there with Episcopalians, mainly white Episcopalians. And another of the speakers was Bishop Mark MacDonald from Canada. And Mark is a fantastic speaker. He is an indigenous person from the First Nations, the lead bishop in the Church of Canada. He's there to encourage white settler Canadians to face up to the violence inherent in them coming to that nation. He says, have you ever done a job where no one wants to hear what you have to say? That's me. And he says, do you know what? What I found is I can rant and rave and say, you terrible people, look at the levels of uh, gambling addiction, of an alcohol addiction. You look at their levels of homelessness. You look at the, at the absolutely appalling way that indigenous people have been treated for generations. Their language is banned. Their children removed from their parents. Their culture destroyed. Their lands appropriated. But you know what? He says, does no good. Does no good. You have to do what Jesus did. You have to walk alongside. You have to walk with, and as you walk with those who aren't aware that they are culpable, as you work, walk with them, they open their eyes, they discover and they see. They discover what they have done and their forefathers have done, and they discover what they can do to be the change in society. At George Floyd's funeral, one of the great campaigners who walked with Martin Luther King Jr. 
He said, you know what's different today? I want to tell you I've got hope. I'll tell you what is different today. When we walked in the 1960s, we were black people walking alone. What gives me hope is that there are people of colour, but they're not just African Americans. We have Hispanics, we have people of Asian uh, inheritance, and we have white people walking with us, shouting, Black Lives Matter. If there's going to be change, we need to walk together. If you don't think that racism is a problem in this society that we live in, you need to find someone who will walk on a journey with you. I've heard stories of racism and I've heard stories of racism in Aylesbury uh, around us. We've heard stories of people who have been made to feel very unwelcome. Those stories are there. It's part of our society and our community. It's in our world. To find a chance to walk alongside. And then the thing that is tempting to do is try and solve their problems. We don't have to solve their problem. We have to solve our problem. Our problem in our hearts, in our minds, in our world around us. That's what we have to work on. We have to be change. Black lives matter. <laughs>